Hello everyone, welcome to our first video covering a very useful tool that we like to use in addition to Elliott Wave, Fibonacci levels. So let's start with uh, a quick theory lesson. You may have heard that name Fibonacci before if you've explored market analysis at all, but what exactly is it? The Fibonacci sequence is a mathematical system in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers in the sequence. Uh, so we usually start with 0 and 1, and from there we can get the other values. So 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus 3, 5, so on and so on. What's fascinating about Fibonacci is that the sequence of numbers very closely approximates the value of phi. That's this symbol here, which is the Greek representation of the golden ratio, which I'm sure you've heard of before. You can see as we continue down this list, the quotient of neighboring numbers in the sequence slowly gets closer and closer to our mysterious value here, 1.618. So, for example, 3 and 2, neighboring values, 3 divided by 2, 1.5. If we skip down to, let's say, 34 over 21, 1.619, 1 getting closer, and then 89 over 55, 1.618. So why is this important? Well, it seems as though nature loves this number. You can find phi and the golden ratio everywhere. It most commonly manifests as a spiral, the golden spiral, which I guarantee you've seen before. Uh, here are some examples. So plants, animals, seashells, weather patterns, even the spiral galaxy we live in, the Milky Way, they all obey the rules of this golden ratio, this golden pattern. So if nature loves this number so much, and if we are a part of nature, then it suggests that our behavior would follow this same golden ratio model as well. The entire world of finance is made of people. So that golden ratio should manifest itself somewhere in the financial markets. And it sounds a bit crazy at first, but when you learn how to recognize Fibonacci levels on a price chart, I'm certain you'll be surprised. It's uncanny how often it works. Now, I don't want to go too far into the weeds as far as the, the math and the theory. I just wanted to give a little bit of background. For trading purposes, there's no need to study this or commit anything to memory. All we really need to know are which Fibonacci levels to watch. So let's go back to our special number 1.618. So I've drawn my fib retracement here, but for those of us who are new to TradingView, you can find it here. It should be in this pop-out menu, uh, first one. And I would recommend clicking the star on uh, right next to the fib retracement tool, just so it appears in your hotbar up here. Uh, you'll probably be using fib retracements quite a bit, so it's nice to have somewhere uh, very quick and accessible. So to draw fib retracements, we start at usually extremes. So let's use this wave one for our example. So we'll start at the base, the origin of wave one, and we'll move to the wave extreme, the peak in this case. Now we'll click here. So at this point, it would be helpful to describe what exactly is a retracement. A retracement is when price backtracks or retraces a portion of the move that came before it. So in this example, we use, uh, we're using wave one. We see our impulse wave one up and our correction wave two down. And the way I've drawn it, wave two has corrected or terminated at 61%, 61.8 retracement level. And if I were to have drawn it like this, we could say, wave two retraced 50% of wave one. And let's say we draw it like this, we would say wave two hit the 38.2 retracement level, something like that. Now, these levels are very useful to us as traders because they are the most common places that prices tend to turn around. So at this point you might be asking, okay, we know why 61.8 is important, but what about these other two? Why 50, why 
Well, 38.2 can be derived from this list. Again, don't want to go too far into the math, but it involves dividing numbers that are two spaces away instead of next to each other. As far as 50% goes, uh, there's no direct uh, derivative from the Fibonacci sequence. But speaking from a psychology perspective, um, humans are pretty simple. Uh, we like things to be uh, uh, even and round. So 50% cut something in half, you have two nice even halves, we tend to like that. So as you are back testing and practicing your wave counting, you will likely see that many corrective waves will terminate in that 50% zone as well. So let's back up a bit and put this into Elliott wave terms. A corrective wave usually terminates at one of these common Fibonacci retracement levels. So again, let's start with our wave one and two. The way I, I had it originally drawn, wave two corrected or retraced 61.8% of wave one. It went to the 61.8 retracement level, a very common level for wave two. So let's try wave three. Again, start at the, the origin of the wave, two at the extreme. And in this case, we have a wave four flat. It looks like the wave four flat retraced 38.2% of wave three. Now, yes, these are idealized examples. Uh, I did draw them that way uh, for the purposes of, of the demonstration, but you really don't have to look very far to see real world examples of this. So here are a couple I found, and I, I really didn't have to look too far at all to find these. So this is a stock, uh, BKKT, I believe, is the ticker. So we can see a pretty clear impulse, one, two, three, four, five up, our three-wave correction down, A, B, C. And look, look what happens with price action as we approach this 61.8 level. Prices come down pretty sharply. We test the level once and bounce we test the level a second time. And again, does it stop exactly at the 61.8? Usually not. But we test that zone, that 61.8 retracement zone, a second time and bounce. And we test it a third time. And even a third time, it's rejected. And now, as we can see, price action is making higher highs. We've broken this recent high, as well as the wave B extreme. So I wouldn't be surprised if this stock continued to climb continues to climb in the coming days or weeks. Here is another example. Now this is uh, current. This is the um, most current tick here. So again, we have one, two, three, four, five up. Uh, I haven't labeled the correction yet, most likely some kind of W, X, Y or something. But uh, I chose this because we are approaching the 61.8% level. So now I'm starting to get interested. This is when I might dive down a time frame, and I'm, I'm looking for impulsive evidence that the correction is over. And again, why? Well, I have my five wave move up, which tells me to expect a correction to follow. I have a very choppy, overlapping, somewhat you know, sloppy price action that fits well in parallel lines. Those are all characteristics of corrective waves. And we are approaching one of the most common areas where corrective waves tend to turn around, the 61.8% retracement. So I would be very curious to see what price does um, later this week and then in the following week as well. Do we possibly come down, test this a bit and bounce? Do we get some type of, of chart pattern, maybe an inverted head and shoulders? Or do we tap it and then perhaps get just a rocket of a wave three? Uh, impulse. Who knows? But one of the benefits of combining Elliott Wave as, as a chart tool and Fibonacci retracement levels as a charting tool, we can start to identify high probability zones where we should be looking for trades. So there's a lot more we can go into as far as Fibonacci goes, uh, but I think that's enough for one video. So Give this a try next time you are back testing and practicing your wave counts. And as always, let us know if you have any questions. All right, thanks, guys.